Hi there, my friends and people I don't know. And looks like I've got one crooked ear here. I'm just kind of dumbling out. Anyways, um, happy 2017. If I haven't spoken with you yet, um, welcome to the new year. I know there's a lot of frustration uh, surrounding political issues, surrounding the frustration of moving forward in this longer colder winter for many people um, there's a lot of frustrations that bring people down around this time of year perhaps you're let down after the high of the holidays maybe the holidays didn't go so good maybe you're just waiting for this winter to end um, but I want to flip that just a little bit and talk about some of the good things that are going on right now um, and good things to look forward to uh, in 2017. Um, as you might or might not know, I'm sure you may be if you're tuned in, uh, my name is Angelo and I am working my way through uh, living with an oligodendroglioma, that's a type of rare brain tumor, which uh, for me has caused epilepsy and a lot of other medical issues. But I'm also doing very well because I've been working very hard at feeling well and doing well. So I want to talk to you about three things in early 2017 that can make this the absolute best year yet. And um, there's three points that I will touch on. I'll keep this a shorter video. I know before I've gone on for half an hour or more, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to keep it real short and sweet. So what can we do this year to make it uh, the best year yet? Now, a lot of people would take that on with much skepticism, and I absolutely understand because I tend to be a skeptical, at times irreverent person, not Mr. Super Positive, I'll admit it. I am, uh, you know... But I also am realistic and I know that there's a lot of things that I can do for myself that I don't do and a lot of the results that I am not satisfied with are because of my own doing and breaking out of molds, changing patterns in behavior doesn't come easy for a lot of people. So a real easy step to kind of ease you into how we're going to make this year a better year than we have ever had before. And I'm hoping this works for me too, because a lot of this I'm doing just as much for myself as I'm doing for other people. Um, first of all, making the 2017 or whatever new year you're watching this and maybe it's in the future and this is still going, I don't know. Um, number one is to celebrate, celebrate the year that you've just survived celebrate the year that you've just enjoyed um, what big wins and accomplishments did you accomplish for lack of better terms what did you achieve in the year 2016 or the previous year um, and these are things that we need to celebrate because these are things that made the year good. I mean, there's a lot, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of shit, a lot of crap, a lot of poop that you didn't really want to be a part of 2016. For me, I could go on and on about health issues. I could go on and on about relationship problems, friend problems, medication problems. Everyone goes through a lot of that stuff. And some more than others, we set ourselves up for a lot of that. But um, over the past 12 months, I've been looking at some notes I have here because I think it's very important to write down things. When you start to write down things, you start to, someone told me, I think it was my, uh, my counselor and friend, uh, she said, when you write something down, you're 40% more likely to follow through with it. So I've been writing a lot, you know, it just kind of etches a mental, um, blueprint for for where you're heading and kind of reinforces that so um over the past 12 months what are the what accomplishments do you have to celebrate well i've been keeping a 
sort of soft journal, I call it, because it was mostly just to keep track of my seizures, uh, medications, dates, um, lengths of time that I've gone without drinking, if that's it's just things that are important to you. It doesn't have to be the same things I'm writing, and also notes for each day. So I kind of remember like, okay, what happened to you on the, let's just say, February 3rd of 2016. I can go back to February 3rd of 2016, and it looks like I had one, I had to take, uh, this is one day off of uh, beginning my non-drinking effort because I've gone, had a beer, gone back. Now I'm going zero tolerance, no beer whatsoever. But it looks like I I was I took one day off. I can see around that time I was a lot of Ativan and um, Clonopin to help stop seizures. And so I was on, took a milligram of Clonopin that day and a milligram of Ativan that day. Not so bad, but um, and some of my handwriting I am having a hard time reading. Um, I had, um, I went, that was just after I went to the game with, uh, my friend Christy to see the Timberwolves against the Blazers. No, not with Christy. That was a different Blazers game, but hard to read my own writing. But, um, um, uh, I was at Beer Mongers, had no seizures that day, which was a big day. I like to write that down when I have a good day. It's noteworthy, not just the bad things to keep track of, mostly keep track of good, both. Um, and I went to see the Blazers and Timberwolves. So that was with my friend Julie. And at certain days, I keep track of big days that I've done steps. If I go to like February 21st, I can see I hung out with a friend Lindsay. Um, I went. Um, to Beaverton, and I also talked to my mom on the phone. So this little thing sometimes. But I also have some bigger days where things went really more exciting. I went to go see Amy Goodman on this day at the Aladdin Theater Speak Live. Um, I had acupuncture and massage on this day. Um, so not every day is super exciting. So I try, I went through a lot of those, not all of them, and I and I and even if you don't have notes of what you did, what sticks out in your mind? Um, mine was I learned to spend more time independently, um, enjoy my own company, um, less time on social media than before. Believe it or not, even though I'm on it a lot, um, stayed strong through chemotherapy and radiation treatment. So. That was good. I it also created a bond with my mother. Um, my mother moved to town uh, in 2016 over the summer, so that was a great, not so much a personal accomplishment, but it was a, it was something that made the year um, wonderful uh, for me, and it felt great. Um, overcame a lot of depression that I'd had in the past dealing with my epilepsy and brain tumor. Um, found new approaches and new techniques to overcome the depression and reduce my dependence on medication. You can see as the year goes on, I can see how I've titrated to lower doses of the uh, benzodiazepines, including the Ativan. Um, but these can be totally different for you. They could be business successes. They could be, you know, relationship successes. Whatever it is you want to focus on, something that's important to you um, and moving forward kind of look back at um, what you really did well last year that was a step forward for you. Um, I shrank the brain tumor through radiation just a bit. Um, I battled harder to have a zero tolerance for alcohol. And as I look at it right now, I have all the days marked for radiation and chemotherapy. I have several days marked right now. I have had 83 consecutive days without a drop of alcohol. I mean, I guess kombucha has like less than one half of a percent. I haven't counted that. But I'm thinking about any sort of like a beer that would give me like a head change or any sort of alcohol uh, that could be not good for me at all. Um, 
I managed to wean myself off of Depakote, which was a big move for me, um, and off of Clonopin. And I survived some terrible meds and depression. I've tried some new meds, didn't work out, got off of them. I was going through seizures and crazy, unpredictable things that happened from these new medications. Still have the seizures, but not as many and not as frequently. And I'm able to sort of adapt and, and realize more when they're coming. I'm going to go to Bend, Oregon. I flew across the country for the first time since my epilepsy to see my mom uh, in Massachusetts. Um, I met someone of interest to me. Um, and I started, you know, I started dating people again, just kind of friendship, dating, but, you know, putting myself out in the world again, not, you know, all bottled up inside and i also met a lot of great uh, mentors friends and uh people on the lines i met some great friends such as my friend justin ami eric tessa Gwen. um second of the three parts and you should write these down too for yourself so you have a list so sometimes i forget um much more than I'm re reading there, but I learned to let go of a lot of things. Um, second part of the three, education. What did I learn in the last 12 months over the year? So over 2016, um, we learned that with better choices, you're going to see better results. So, um, and those choices and results come from lessons. Um, uh, best lessons I learned in the last 12 months over the last year. Um, number one for me was I didn't need to obsess about goals as much. I was focused on my goals, but sometimes you can over obsess on your diet, on your treatments, natural. I was out the gate when I had a diagnosis of my brain tumor in late 2013, early 2014. And I was determined to fill my fridge full of every supplement, eat smoothies all the time, uh, just a full-on ketogenic diet. And from all that obsessive, you know, becoming as healthy as I can be attitude, I just about burned myself out and it acted sort of counterintuitive to the, what I was trying to do. And so I became, I've become less obsessive about my goals. If I want to eat some bread or a bun or, you know, cheat a little bit on my gluten goals, it, I do that. I do that because it's just, and it made some sacrifices, you know, but I also let myself have a little leeway. Um, don't need to go beyond the limits of what is healthy and good to impress myself and others. So don't have to check the Fitbit every five minutes to make sure that you're leading your competition or your team. And it's something I'm still working on, but let it go. You know, you don't have to be the best at everything. You don't have to be obsessive compulsive about everything. I know this goes for a lot of people who are working very hard to heal. Healing doesn't happen in an instant and sometimes it just doesn't always completely ever happen it just is a gradual process that you just continue to have to work on you fall and you get back up and you keep going and before you know it you look back and you say you know I'm there's a lot of things I still do but I do them less frequently and I am building um, building my strength up um, for me it's a, like I said accepting my setbacks that's a big accomplishment for me. I mean, it might sound like nothing, like a double negative, but accepting my setbacks is a good thing. Um, and not being afraid to fall and fail because I've fallen and failed so many times that I feel like sometimes it's the end of the world when I don't meet my goals. I'm determined, like, I'm going to beat this thing. I am going to cure myself. But, you know, not letting a condition or an issue define who you are like I'm not gonna call myself the guy with the brain tumor um, sure I have a brain tumor sure I'm an advocate for it sure it's a huge part of who I am and how I self-identify but you know to keep that on my mind all the time to always be going into the emergency room when something goes wrong you know I really kind of learned 
over time to know better. Oops, time to take my meds. Le learn how to deal with that a little bit better. Um, less fear, less fear in your heart, and less worry. Less fear and worry, good thing. And the third part of what I wanted to say today was um, a, a good thing to write down or recognize over the past year is what were you doing when you achieved your best results over the past year? Now, you may just be starting off. You may just be new to um, what it is that you are set out to do. You may have just stumbled and fallen off the wagon, or you may have just, you know, whatever the wagon may be, um, an addiction, an, an issue, a behavioral change that you're really seeking out to do, and maybe you're just starting to make it. But you know you've made growth, and it could be just as simple as, you know, self-awareness could be just the hugest thing for you right now. It could be just like, okay, I'm, I'm aware of this. I know I have an issue, I, or I know that there's something I want to do. Um, um, staying active for me, um, getting good rest, um, being steady and consistent with the life patterns that I know are going to have the best results for me, um, getting consistent sleep, and less time in front of the computer, the TV, or the phone. Um, the phone and social media world, I realize, are not my friends. There's people behind those icons, emojis, uh, avatars, but those represent friends. And I think it's better to get on the phone and talk to a friend if you're not around them. Or actually just go outside, uh, meet with somebody experience some time together with someone, go on a walk, talk about your life. Um, if all you talk about in your life to someone face to face is about something that you have a problem with online, you might have a problem there. I don't know. Um, but for me, what you're doing, what you achieved, what helped you achieve your best results in the past year? For me also, you know, I give myself I've learned to give myself more love and try to be more humbler. Now, other people can be the decision, can decide on that, but I have meditated and employed more mindfulness this year, worked on it. I realize in all of these things, I've got a ways to go, and I've been working at them for a few years now. And if you just think you are enlightened and you know everything, and you're like, oh, I see the light, and maybe you do, and such a great extent, like, cloud opens but there's so many clouds that you know you can look through and more roll in and it's an I guess an analogy that I just came up with but clouds you know anti-epileptic medication down the hatch all right more mindfulness less time wasting so hopefully this isn't a waste of time making this video. I am kind of stepping off of what I sh should be doing in a way right now, but this is very cathartic and I like it. Um, and slow down my scattering and racing thoughts because my mind is like, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta do this, gotta do that. And I get on tangents and being so, attempting to be so productive, I become the opposite of that. And then I'm here sometimes. So that's about it. The three points, New Year's, how to make it your absolutely best year yet. Three things. Celebrate the accomplishments that you've made in the past year. Number two, and write them down. What have you accomplished? All, all the things that come to mind. And the sheet might get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, it should because, you know, there's a long year behind you. And you forget a lot of things. We tend to focus on the bad and just remember. And not remember all the great things we made, even though they're just little things, they helped us along so far. Um, secondly, education. Um, what did you learn in the past year? And third, what were you doing when you achieved your best results? These all go together very well. So, Think about those three things and hopefully this video has helped you out and 
thank you to all of the people I've learned from and who have inspired me. This is Angelo, and I really appreciate you checking out my video blog. Have a great day. Peace.